Hello, today is November 12, 2020. My name is Fabio Langon and I'm interviewing Cristian Hernandez for the University Library Special Collections and Archives at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, hereafter abbreviated as UTRGV. This project is in partnership with the Voces Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. Please know, Mr. Cristian Hernandez, that this interview will be placed in the University Library Special Collections and Archives at UTRGV and shared with the Voces Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin. If there is anything you do not wish to answer or talk about, I will honor your wishes. Also, if there is something you want to talk about, please bring it up and we'll talk about it. The University Library Special Collections and Archives will archive your interview along with any other photographs and other documentation you're willing to share. UTRGV University Library will retain copyright or non-exclusive right to the interview and any other materials you donate to special collections and archives at UTRGV. Because we are not conducting this interview in person, I need to record you consenting to make sure you agree with our interview procedures before we continue. So I'll ask you a series of six questions. Please say yes, I agree, or no, I do not agree after each question. Mm -hmm. Do you give um, university library special collections and archives at UTRGV consent to archive your interview and your materials at the UTRGV university library? Yes. Okay. Do you grant UTRGV university library special collections and archives right, title, and interest in copyright over the interview? and any materials you provide? Yes. Okay. Do you agree to allow UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives to post this interview on the internet where it may be viewed by people around the world? Yes. And do you grant the University Library Special Collections and Archives consent to share your Zoom interview with the Voices Oral History Center at the University of Texas at Austin for inclusion in the Voices of a Pandemic Oral History Mini Project which will include posting the interview on the internet. Yes. Okay. As you recall, we previously filled out a pre-interview form. We use information from the pre-interview form to help in research. The entire form is kept in a secure VOSIS server at the University of Texas at Austin. Before VOSIS sends it to UTRGV, University Library Special Collections and Archives, we would have stripped out any contact information for yourself or family members. So that will not be part of our public file. Your public file will only be accessible at UTRGV University Library. And the final two questions ask for your consent on what I just described. Do you wish for us to share the rest of your interview in your public file available to researchers at UTRGV University Library Special Collections and Archives? Yes. And on occasion, UTRGV Special Collections and Archives and Voices receive requests from journalists who wish to contact our interview subjects. We only deal with legitimate news outlets. Do you give consent for us to share your phone number or your email with journalists? Yes. Okay. Thank you for your consent. Your experiences and stories mean a lot to us at UTRGV Special Collections and Archives. I look forward to what you have to say in your interview questions. I will now ask. Mm -hmm. Okay. Christian, first of all, thank you for your time. Like I said earlier, your stories and experiences are valuable to us at UTRGV Special Collections and Archives and the Voices Project. Particularly for us at UTRGV Special Collections, we are committed to preserving the stories of Mexican Americans and Latinos from the South Texas and RGV and those who work closely with, the, with these populations. During this COVID-19 pandemic, because you are a tutor at South Texas College who cares for the physical safety and mental well being of your students in the community of McAllen, Texas, and because you are a son, brother, and friend who is knowledgeable of the ways COVID 19 has affected others in his inner circle, I know you have many meaningful stories and experiences to share on how COVID 19 has impacted these roles you carry out in your life. So before I ask you all to share your story, um, tell us who Cristian Hernandez is. Um, Cristian Hernandez is, um, well, of course, a tutor at STC. Um, I am attending college at the same time as working, so I can study and eventually graduate to hopefully become a history teacher 
And then from there, I plan on moving on to becoming a professor in the near future. Um, but yeah, I guess that's pretty much sums me up. Okay, awesome. So the first question I wanna ask you is, when did you first hear about COVID-19 and how did you learn about it? Um, at first I heard about it through social media, specifically like um, social media outlets like as Facebook, where there was a lot of people sharing stuff about the, the virus. Um, but I also heard it through coworkers at work because they would discuss it um, while we were waiting for students. Um, but of course I furthered my understanding of this virus through my own research through Google and stuff like that. Okay. What was your first reaction to the information about COVID-19? My first reaction, of course, as everyone reacts to a deadly virus is fear, of course. Um, social media made it sound like the Black Plague. I'm not sure if they're exaggerating or not, but I would also see like sad stories with this virus. So it also like, I guess, you know, emphasize my feeling of fear of this virus that was um, spreading quickly throughout the world. Got it. Um, at what point did you realize this pandemic was a serious life altering event? Um, I guess again, because of social media, I realized that this virus was very deadly. Um, but then I would always hear other people saying that it was just like a flu. So I felt kind of confused by what people were saying and wanted to know what the truth was um, because you know, it was mixed. Some people said that it was deadly and then some people were saying that it isn't deadly. It's just like a normal virus that someone goes through. Um, but yeah. Yes. Um, over the last few months, what news media, social media, or other sources do you rely on to keep you informed about the virus? Um, I did rely on a lot of information from CDC. Um, I also paid attention to many federal and state government public statements. Um, as for social media, of course, I, already stated that I used Facebook a lot because if I'll post something about the virus, their opinions or about the virus, so that made up my main source of information. Okay. And can you share with me what you understand about COVID-19 as an infectious disease? I understand that the COVID-19, it is a contagious virus which targets the respiratory system of a person. Um, it's capable of making them nauseous, feeling chest pain. I even hear some people say they were having more breathing when they contract this virus. Um, I've also heard that it's very life-threatening to the lungs, that some people have been to their lungs thanks to this virus. Life-altering virus. Okay. Um, likewise, can you share with me what you don't understand about the virus, if there's something you don't understand about it? Okay, what I don't understand about this virus is maybe on how it spread so quickly, because it literally take, it took on the world in like two weeks. Um, also people like saying a bunch of conspiracy theories, some fake and some reasonable, very confusing time to understand how this virus was formed. Yes. Um, would you take the first COVID-19 vaccine available on the market? Why or why not? I would take the virus, I mean, I would take the vaccine to the virus, uh, but I would be a little bit skeptical about it. Um, I say skeptical, skeptical is in, in
to its effectiveness. Um, of course, I did take a test to test the for the if I had the COVID virus, and I did not begin getting sick until I after I immediately took it. So that's why I would be a little bit skeptical about the vaccine. Got it. And do your family hold the same beliefs as you about COVID-19 or are there some members who take it more seriously or lightly? Um, yeah, I feel like it's a very universal thing about the thoughts and opinions about this virus. Uh, of course, my mother and my aunt were the ones who I believe took it the most seriously. They would like, constantly had like germ neck stations around the house so you could consistently keep your hands clean. Um, I believe even my mother called in like a professional cleaning service to spray antiviral spray all over the house. So I feel like they took it very seriously. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. So for these next set of questions, I'd like to talk about how you've seen COVID-19 affect family members, friends, and equal important because you are 21 years old and maybe the youth and the elders have different views on the dangers that surround this virus. So let's talk about the way your family responded to you testing positive for COVID-19. How did they react? Um, so instantly, um, I just told my parents, of course, and my dad. And then from there, the information spread out. And then everyone started. Um, they were scared. They took it, like I said, they took it very seriously. So they felt like if me and my little brother were going to like die because of the virus, um, of course, so like they would message me consistently and call me and check on me and my brother to see if we were doing fine and thank um, God that we were doing fine. Um, but yeah, there is some confusion between the youth and then the elderly being with like health and whatnot. Yes. Um, how did you feel right after finding out that you tested positive? Um, honestly, after finding out, it's strange, but I actually wasn't bothered by it. Um, I feel like mainly because I was kind of shocked that I got it because they said that I was asymptomatic because I have no symptoms whatsoever, but my test came out positive, which was very strange to me. So instead of being like, oh, no, I'm going to like suffer because of this very deadly virus. Instead, I was trying to be like, where did I get this virus from? Because I did take the necess necessary precautions. Um, I always wore gloves. I always washed my hands. I always wore a face mask. So that's why it was kind of strange that I got the virus and that it had no symptoms. So I guess my mind was too confused on something else instead of feeling fear. Got it. And what was pre-quarantine life like for you? So that question, um, so pre-life quarantine, Honestly, it was exactly the same as during life, during quarantine life. Um, I never really went out anywhere other than work, school, or to go shop, shopping for groceries or clothes. Um, yeah, so it's practically the same as quarantine life, only now I have to work from home and such and take um, classes virtually. That is something that I miss, taking classes um, in person and getting to know my fellow classmates and my professor. Um, but yeah, in my pre-life quarantine, I did exercise and I ate healthy a lot. So I feel like that actually like prepared me for this virus in a way to withstand it. That's good. Um, you mentioned you are in a relationship. How did your girlfriend feel when she found out that you got it? Did she panic or did she too test positive? um so she actually did get sick um her whole family actually did get sick and they took it uh, actually a lot harsher than ours um all of them are okay they're all good now but during the quarantine time they actually were bedridden um the only thing is that they never got tested i believe the mother did get tested though and of my girlfriend she did get tested and i think she tested negative even though many of them were actually like, feeling very sick um, so I couldn't say that my girlfriend necessarily panicked for me because her, their family were taking, they were having their own problems. Um, but thank God that they're all fine now. Mm -hmm. um, how would you compare what you felt you knew about the virus to what you heard about it on the news? Um, 
Mm -hmm. So the feeling of mixed um, understanding of this virus because of what social media um, says, you know, many people are saying that it is a deadly virus. Many people are saying that it isn't. Um, I've even seen uh, sources of local doctors here in my area saying that um, the virus isn't contagious. It's just like any other flu. Um, so at first, you know, I felt like I personally did think that the virus was deadly, but it wasn't after until at, when I got the virus firsthand and felt its, um, you know, its symptoms or however you call it, that I realized that yes, it is just a minor flu, but some people do take it harsher than others, like the elderly and those people. Um, before getting sick, did you take any extreme or drastic measures to prevent uh, contracting COVID-19, like the ones we saw on social media, like the gas mask or the people that would cover from head to toe or double gloves, anything like that? Um, so not necessarily, I did, but I have uh, thought, you know, I should just wear a whole like suit to really like avoid this virus. And I mean, what a perfect time to go out dressed like that. Um, but no, I didn't actually do anything serious. Um, I do have a gas mask, but no, I'm not going to use it for that. <laughs> Got it. Um, you also mentioned that prior to getting tested, you felt no symptoms. How do you feel knowing that you took the responsible decision in getting tested even without feeling symptoms? Um, as to like my feelings? Yeah, so I felt that I felt like I did good, you know, because um, I do know that there have been times where there are some people that did get tested positive and they still continue to go out in public and they spread the virus. You know, it's a very selfish thing that some people do or not wear masks. Um, so as soon as I got it, the first thing that came to my mind is that I need to email my boss and told them that I had the virus positive and right away human resources called me and they told me all this stuff you know um if I continue to feel sick so that they can help me out and that they're there for me so that was really good on their part and SEC's part um they responded really well to um me testing positive um but I felt good I felt good telling everyone that I had the virus so that way you know that they can keep their six feet or further if they want, um, you know, just so they can be aware of the virus that I had it. Mm -hmm. um, you shared with me that you have a brother um, and having been close to your brother, did he test positive too? Yeah, so all three of us got tested, me, my mother and my brother. Um, so my mom was the one that was feeling sick. So that's why we went to go get tested. Um, and me and my brother were completely fine, we were normal. When we get also all three of us got the test um so when we get back the results me and my brother tested positive and we're, we're both like what like how did we test positive and my mom who says she had symptoms tested negative so that's why it was so strange and why i began to be skeptic about these tests um but they said that i was asymptomatic so it was normal so because me and my brother were tested positive basically what we did is quarantine of course for two weeks 14 days um in my room so we were just here watching TV or the video games and stuff like that. Um, but I'm pretty much the only one that took on the symptoms. Um, thank God that my brother was fine. He's younger than me and I didn't want him to feel anything. And he didn't. He was actually fine the entire time. Um, not even his temperature rose. So that's why it was kind of strange that he tested positive. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, but... Uh, so yeah, so that's great. I took on the weight, I guess, because I did uh, get nausea. I did get feelings of vomiting. The best thing is that I did not get any, um, how do you say it, chest pain, or I did not get any trouble breathing because that would have been so scary, you know, uh, not being able to breathe. So basically what I did is just go outside, you know, an hour or two, five hours, um, get some exercise in as well to keep my lungs active and not um, bedridden. Yes. Um, so what struggles, if any, did you face at home with COVID-19? At home, the struggles, hmm. I would say boredom, 
boredom <laughs> for sure. Um, I mean, everyone complains in quarantine that they're at their home. Um, to try being in your room for an extended period of time, just in the small confined area, it's way worse than it is. Um, so that's why I would go outside to get my breaks and stuff. And I would distance myself from my mother as well as my brother. Um, and everything came out all right. But yeah, I, I'd say that boredom was probably the biggest problem that I had at home. Got it. Um, so now some more personal work-related questions. When it comes to your emotional state during COVID-19, what did you do to stay sane in times of hardship? So like, what did I do to keep myself like occupied in a way, like sane? Yes. Yeah, so definitely um, if you wanna get prepared for the virus and whatever it might do, definitely get some sun and then get some exercise as well. For sure exercise, even if it's just like a little bit just you need to have your body working um, to keep yourself sane and not just be there at home, laying down in a chair or something. Um, I believe you also need to get your mind working. So like instead of watching TV, maybe read a book or something or learn something new. Um, just, I guess, try to find ways to improve yourself. That's basically what I did during my time in quarantine. Um, I would read books and w surf the web and looking for things, how to improve myself. That's really good. Um, can you share your experience more in depth? Like, what do you mean? Like experience of what? Um, with your like emotional state, like were you sad, angry, confused? So I never really got mad. I never really got sad, honestly. Um, I didn't really feel scared either that I had the virus, which is something strange, you know, having the virus means that you would be scared, especially if you had it, if you tested positive for it. But I feel like um, this is like on a faith related level. I feel like my faith is what basically had me like emotionally stable throughout the time of, you know, me having the virus. So my faith of God. Got it. Um, what did you feel before contracting the virus? What did you discover about both the virus and yourself? Um, what I discovered about myself, um, I guess that I am a strong person in a way, emotionally and mentally to be able to like, you know, take on the um the course of being in a small area for so long as well as having the virus um i also found out that medicine tastes really bad because i did get some uh medicinal medicine to cope with the virus even though the symptoms were very minor well not minor per se i guess maybe it's just like depending on the person's pain tolerance but um I did take some medicines to cope with the virus, um, but yeah. Um, you're a college tutor. Tell me about what a tutor work day is like for you. What subjects do you teach? Um, so a tutor work day, yeah. So pretty much I have that very organized and very planned out. Um, I, the subject that I teach is English. So, you know, like essays and whatnot and writing and the English language. Um, basically how it goes now that it's virtual um well i'll explain it traditional and then virtual traditional basically it's like a, a classroom there at stc i wait for my students to come in they come in and then you know we have our daily um, icebreaker to warm them up maybe sometimes like a writing prompt and stuff like that just so they can like i guess break the ice and then we have like an activity going over something that uh, the professor went over and then we ended off with like a reflective kind of activity um now that it's online it has become a little bit more challenging not gonna lie because much of the activities were hands-on you know working with boards or working with like cards and stuff like that um so virtual has been challenging being that there's very limited resources for an english teacher or an english tutor to use um, but we've been getting there, we've been coping, and still the students come to the sessions. Good. 
Um, how long have you been tutoring at South Texas College? Um, well, with this um, finishing semester, at the end of the semester, I will have been teaching, I would have been tutoring for a whole year. A whole year. Um, can you share with me what you enjoy the most about your job? I enjoy being a part of SDC. I never would have found myself being part of such a prestigious um, um, organization, especially like STC. It's just, I don't know, sometimes I reflect on myself and I'm like, wow, I'm actually working for STC, which is something awesome. Um, especially as a um, English tutor, it's just something crazy. Um, I love it. Um, do you think that South Texas College Tutoring Department handled the dangers of COVID-19 properly? Oh yes, for sure. Um, like I said, um, so we were working there for a while. Um, the students were sent home, but the, the workers were still there for a little while. It wasn't until that I actually got the virus that they um, shut down the CLE, which is the area that I work at, and they sent everyone home. Um, so I feel that they handled it very well. You know, they didn't just let any worker that tested positive be there and continue to be there. And like I said, as soon as I sent an email to my boss, I got a call from Human Resources and they told me um, a bunch of good stuff, you know, how they're going to help me out and stuff like that if I ever have any trouble with this virus. So they're very considerate and, you know, uh, very courteous to the, me having this virus or to anyone having the virus. It's good to hear. Um, do you feel like they were caring in terms of keeping you safe when the coronavirus first emerged? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so before, of course, everyone was sent to work from home. Um, there were strict rules. Um, if there was a germex station like every five um, feet where you can, you know, of course, sanitize your hands. They had all the workers like mandatorily separate um, in their workstations. They had to sanitize their stations before they got there and then after they left. So for sure the workstations were clean. Um, yeah, they handled it very well. And then um, only like certain buildings were being used. Um, so yeah, so they handled it very well before the coronavirus. Um, what are the pros of virtual tutoring in your opinion? And is it difficult for you? So the pros I would say is not me, but if you are someone else who had trouble public speaking, um, I guess that's a pro because you know you don't have to see a full class of students like looking at you while you're talking. Um, it's more so just like a screen. Um, another pro I would say would be that, like I said, I stated earlier that there are limited resources, but there are some good sources out there, um, like Kahoot, which I know that students love. So you can use Kahoots, like stuff like that for your students and they'll enjoy them. Um, of course, safety, you know, being that the coronavirus is around, I believe that virtual tutoring is very effective in, you know, stopping that um, the spread of coronavirus. Um, the cons, though, of course, uh, there are a lot of cons as well with virtual tutoring. Um, I feel like one of the biggest ones, and not very common, actually, is technical limitations or technical problems where students are having trouble connecting whether like their device or the Wi-Fi. Another con could be, of course, background noise. Um, sometimes students have like children or they might have an animal. Um, one time I had a student who had parakeets um, in the background. Um, of course, that could be fixed by just muting them on then each person gets their own turn to talk. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like that those are probably the two biggest cons that I feel with virtual learning. Right. Um, as a 21 year old college student slash tutor with an active schedule, how did you adjust to staying at home for the first time for the time that you stayed? I actually very enjoyed uh, staying at home instead of driving around being that I live very far from SDC. Um, I live actually 30 minutes away. So working from home and then learning from home was a big like it saved me on gas money, but and time. Um, but 
because now that it's online and that I don't see professors like face to face and you know um, the times can get mixed up so basically what I did is I bought a physical planner like a daily planner and that helped me organize everything like very well now I'm like on top of everything a good idea um, how did you feel during the coronavirus how would you compare what you thought you knew before to what you actually felt during it? Um, so the thing that did confuse me is that they stated that there was going to be a lot of like chest pain and a lot of respiratory problems. I actually didn't have. The only thing that I felt um, sometimes would be maybe shortness of breath, but very minor, very minor. Um, aside from that, I did get nausea. Um, the biggest thing that did ca catch me off guard and I didn't notice it until like go um, further into the virus was they stated that you would lose your sense of smell and your sense of taste. And I definitely lost my sense of smell because I could not smell anything at all. I, rem I, I realized this when I was gonna make some, I believe it was blueberry, blueberry pancakes or blueberry muffins. And there was the mix. And you know, of course the mix gives off like a very like good smell. Um, my brother commented on it saying that it smelled super good. And I put the bowl like to my face and I could not smell a single thing. So that's something that, you know, I did not expect to lose my sense of smell and it did not come back until like, I don't know, uh, three months after or two months after the virus oh, went away. Interesting. Wow. Um, can you name a point in time during quarantine where you felt that your life changed from having COVID-19? Where my life changed? Um, Hmm. I wouldn't say my life changed. Um, I'm very grateful that nothing serious happened due to the virus. Um, the only thing, of course, that did change was, you know, someone giving you like the side eye because like you tested positive for corn for um, COVID. So I guess that sort of like, you know, mm -hmm. was extreme social distancing now. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing uh, I guess that changed. So now that you've shifted back, to normal life what do you think you got out of covid that you would consider a positive a positive hmm. can you give me some examples like do you feel like you appreciate life a little better or do you feel like um anything negative came out of it like you became such of a homebody now that you forgot like social skills, like anything new that you got from that? Hmm. On the positive side, uh, I guess it kind of helped me with, I mean, I already have a good amount of self-esteem or like self-respect, um, but I feel like it made me realize that I am, I guess, healthy or something or like fit, um, being able to take on the virus, a very deadly virus. Um, so I guess it helped me understand that I'm, my body is actually like capable and strong of standing that virus. Um, on the negative side, I feel like my social skills might have been affected by staying away from, you know, like large groups of people for so long, um, especially being a tutor where I have to talk to people. Um, I feel like I need to regain my social skills again. Yes. Um, so work-related challenges as an STC tutor do you feel like your job as a tutor is being appreciated or acknowledged more now than ever? Do you think your tutor title is now more essential than it was before? Oh, yes, for sure. Yeah. Um, so on the first question, if my work did appreciate us more, for sure, um, because now it's a lot harder. Um, it was like all of a sudden we just had to shift from personal teaching to virtual teaching on like the press of a button so for sure we had to have some form of appreciation and they did appreciate us eventually they gave us um social distance and regulation of course um they gave us um some goodie bags to i guess to show appreciation of our hard work and dedication to cle and stc um as for um tutoring for sure um i know a lot of this same shift that happened to workers I know that it also happened to other students who prefer learning 
on campus and traditional campuses where they see the professor and meet them and meet other students, for sure they took it very harshly. Um, now they have to do everything virtually and I know it can be hard for them to develop discipline, to stay on schedule and finish their assignments on time. Um, so being a tutor, I know that many students have been thank many students have thanked me for helping them out, especially during this time where it's very um, demanding to switch to virtual learning. Totally. Um, did you get a pay raise or paid at all? Um, not necessarily a pay raise. Um, they did cut our hours like a little bit because of enrollment issues with mm -hmm. students, um, but no pay raise, um, nothing like that. Nothing serious at least. Okay. And what steps is South Texas College taking now to protect you, your coworkers and students when they go back to face-to-face -to -face tutoring? Hmm. So I have visited the CLE a while back and I saw that they were already implementing stuff. So they were like separating tables, they were separating all computers and stuff like that. And they were also having like these like plastic dividers almost like these tall, they look like glass, um, basically to separate anyone if they're gonna talk face to face. Um, they also have to wear masks and gloves and sanitize their hands and whatnot. Um, so I feel like SDC is very prepared for when we have to go back to face to face. Good. And are you satisfied with the local response to COVID-19 in Mission, Texas, as part of Hidalgo County? I am, you know, um, so a lot of people are skeptic about the decisions that the local government has made, um, as opposed to like open re with regards to opening up uh, certain shops and stuff like that. Um, but I am satisfied with what they have done, you know, to keep small businesses and stuff like that open. Um, of course, as long as they maintain, you know, six feet and then all the um, necessary precautions. But yeah, I am satisfied. They've also implemented curfews and stuff, anything to get um, this virus to die down. Yes. Are you satisfied with the state response to COVID-19 led by Governor Abbott? Yeah, I am. Yeah, he's done some um, decisions that are helped, I guess. Okay. Sort of, you know, stop the virus. Are you satisfied with the national response to COVID-19 led by President Trump and his administration? Um, I would say so. You know, um, I honestly, I haven't really paid attention to much of the stuff that um, on the national level, I've more so paid attention to like local and state government statements. Um, but yeah, I feel, you know, um, I guess I would say I'm satisfied. And if you had the power to respond to COVID-19, what would you do differently, if anything? Hmm. What would I do differently? I guess um, I would open up necessary things like, well, of course, hospitals hospitals, um, you know, grocery, like supermarkets and stuff like that. But I would not open up unnecessary stuff like bars um, and a few other things, you know, just we need the necessary things, um, of course. Yeah. And this is a very special year in our national democracy because it is a presidential voting year. Did you vote? And if so, did you notice or do anything different because of the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, so I know I'm supposed to uphold my citizen responsibility to vote, but I actually did not vote. Um, I don't know, I just didn't vote this year. I did vote last year. I mean, yeah, the last election, but I didn't vote this election. Um, I don't know, also to, you know, to maintain a distance. I don't want to risk spreading it to anyone else or getting it again. Got it. 
Um, is there anything else you would like to share with me about your experiences with COVID-19 that I have not asked you about? Um, I guess I just want to say like some tips or a tip and that is exercise and eat good because that will help you in the long run. You know, we need to be able to fight this virus if we ever get it um, for any chance. You know, uh, medicine's expensive for sure. So, you know, get your workout in and your food. Got it. Well, Christian, thank you so, so very much for doing this. Um, you are part of oral literary tradition. Um, this is a very big deal to UTRGV in partnership with UT Austin. And I'm very glad that you took your time to share with me your experience with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, thank you for having me and thank you for al allowing me, I guess, to speak in this very you know, prestigious uh, interview. Yes, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you.